Welcome back to the channel. Today, well actually I'll tell you what, I should start off by thanking you for, for this vlog because this vlog is all because a few people recommended that while we're in Suffolk we go to a place called Crazy Horse in Barry St Edmunds. And Crazy Horse is a, a just Googling it, because I had no idea it exists, I'll, I'll be completely honest, I didn't know it existed until a few people mentioned it. Brilliant looking destination dealership full of really aspirational motorbikes, custom motorbikes, very, very cool selection of cars such as Caterham's, Morgan's, things like that. Got a coffee shop, so Monica will be delighted. And it's just, so I just put my pin in here, into the bike shed and it's just a really cool looking place that you want to go nice ride i think it should be fairly winding lanes to get there and things like that just go there enjoy it have a coffee and just look at the bikes and the cars and dream that one day you may be able to own one of them my kind of day the bike Won't start. I'm delighted you can see this because you're about to see something very special here. Okay, so I've said a few times that once in every 20 rides, the Bonneville, it just won't start. It will do that ticking sound. You press it. Okay, now nothing. And I used to worry about it. But that's why I always take this with me. Okay, Monica, come around here. I'll show you a little bit of magic. So now I've got this very simple screw instead of needing a, a screwdriver or something. Side panel off. And the great thing about this is there's only a 10% chance of electrocuting yourself. It's brilliant. So expose the starter solenoid. Plastic handle, ignition on, clutch in. If you know any friends with Bonneville 865s and they have this issue, share this. British company. Really nice lining. I'd actually love, love one of those helmets. Often get questions, what's some good female riding gear? And this section here is all for female riders. And we've just found that. That is a boot that Monica's just tried and probably the coolest female riding boot that I slash we've seen. And it's from a company called Former, 120 pounds. Reinforced ankle, both one side, reinforced toe, and that is a 120 pounds, super, super sleek female riding shoe or riding boots. That's a good buy. So all these books here, 
original parts and accessories for American V-Twins. Every part for the engine for the bike that you can possibly imagine. And then, I guess they've got a good stock of stuff right here. Well, we've been browsing for about an hour now and I'll take you around each of the bikes. Because I said it a few times, it's just the finest selection. Cannot stop looking at them. The gear upstairs is brilliant. And the bike choice is painful, it's so good. And they've got everything from these 5K Caballeros to kind of 30, 40K custom builds. Okay, the bikes that this one sold, I've really just started to love the look of these Caballeros. Six and a half K, they look amazing. I've showed them in a few vlogs now. They look absolutely brilliant. And then you've got these custom chopper builds. I mean, that is just an incredible build. Norton Commando. These Indians, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, I think these are the new, I think they're the new Chiefs. I think I can tell by the different shape of the engine and I've never seen one in the flesh. That one's sold there. See, look at that different engine shape compared to the Scout. Custom, look at that, custom Indian build. This is interesting. This is an Indian Scout. That's an Indian Scout. Uh, they've called it the Hooligan. It's a custom job, but they also sell all of the individual parts needed to actually make the bike yourself. Onto these, a couple more Indian Scouts but with the full touring setup. They actually look really good with the touring setup and genuinely comfortable with that backrest. That's a great, great looking touring setup. Big on Indians here, really big on Indians. A couple more Scouts and just make sure I haven't missed anything. MV Augusta's at the back with probably one of the most stunning looking bikes I've ever seen, the Super Veloce, the black one there, that has been sold. I think these are called the Brutales. And again, they look amazing. I actually have no idea the prices of these. 18K for that. Let's see, look, that one's sold as well. That uh, Super Veloce sold. Ooh. Oh, now these. This is interesting. Fantic Enduro. 5,200 pounds. That... Actually, that looks good. I'm just looking at that now. That seat height, you've got to be about six foot six to be able to ride that. Absolutely no way I could put my feet down on that bike. Okay. For that stunning Indian, 38,400 pounds. Wow, stuff I... It goes way above my head there. Kiwi Indian 84 engine. No idea, but it looks amazing. I mean, it looks better than amazing. That is stunning. I'm not hugely mechanically minded, so someone tell me if I'm completely wrong. Is this leaf spring suspension on the front of this Scout? Is that pretty much what you get on old cars and vans? I'm sure it is. Well, my heart was broken. The day we turn up, the crazy horse coffee shop was closed because people have to think at the coffee shop, do some self-isolation for two weeks or something. But that's just bad luck on our, on our side. But they've got a great coffee shop upstairs, really nice destination to go to. We're in the middle of Bury St. Edmunds. I've never been here before. We'll go for a coffee there in a bit, but everyone seems to be going for a walk down there. So we'll see what's going on. 1st of July, quite cold and raining. So, so angry, so angry. But here we are, Bury St. Edmunds. This is a monastery, I think, in the middle of Bury St. Edmunds. First one of which was built in 633. It's about 1,400 years ago and the ruins that we see now is still about a thousand years old.
just seen that a lot of this stuff in this coffee shop is actually for sale. So a lot of the furniture, chairs, things like that, you can actually buy. And a lot of it is from old aircraft, which is interesting. So for example, these mirrors, 120 pounds, and they are pressure plate mirrors from an old Airbus. Street Bob, bike I really want to test. This is 2021 Harley Street Bob. One of, I say this too much, I know. It's one of my favorite bikes, but it sounds so boring. Yeah, yeah. No one even believes anymore. No. Perfect stance, mini eight bars, and have a look at the speedo. Come out here, Mike. Yeah. How minimal is that? It's just so slick. Uh, one of the phases. Uh, Look at the stance, the seat. I think this is a big step up from the last ones. And this is now a soft tail, not a diner. I'd love to try one of these. Monica feels too awkward with me standing next to someone's bike. For a long time. <laughs> yeah. You don't know who's looking through windows. Still, we need to try and test one of those because that is a stunningly good looking bike. Remember I said in the last episode that the nice red phone boxes were replaced with ugly BT phone boxes. I don't know why these are still here. They need to be ripped down, chucked in the bin, move on, forget about it. On a positive, it's good to know that if you have to send an email, you can actually go inside here. And I can send an email if needed, if needed. That's actually great if I've got something urgent to do. My, my phone's not out of battery and I just, there's something urgent I need to do. So at least I can do a bit of work here, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Just really knuckle down for a bit, it's good to know. <laughs> Better head back because I forgot to bring the chain lock so we couldn't lock the helmets. My steering lock on the bike is broken so someone could just wheel off my bike without any kind of issue at all and no one would say it works because it doesn't look like they're breaking it. So we'll get back to the bike. It's been spitting with rain pretty much all day and I'm gonna have a look and see if I can find some of those boots online for for monica because unfortunately they didn't have the size of crazy horse and i think they are the perfect boots well i think monica thinks they're the perfect boots and i agree with her yeah Well, it's just got worse and worse. So we've pulled over near Monica's flat. And I know we get a few expats, Brits who have relocated to Australia, the US and things like that. And they like seeing a few videos of merry old England. But do you remember why you relocated? First of August, cold and wet. Still love it, but I promise you the weather hasn't changed. Gear for the day. Throttle snake gloves for Monica. Rough up tobacco gloves for me. And something I haven't worn on the Ipswich vlogs. This is the RST jacket. I really like this wax cotton jacket, heavy duty, built in elbow pads. Shoulder as well, 
and a pocket for the back armor. Very comfortable with RST jeans. These are the Kevlar jeans, 130 pounds for those. Superb, superb value for such good looking jeans and a very, very good fit on those. And these are a really good buy, I think, along with the TCX X-Blend boots. And actually, without meaning to, this is, I would say, I'm meaning to do a video about it, about I, I can put together a 1,200 pound outfit or I can put together about a 400 pound outfit just to show the difference. And this would be an example here that I'm wearing of one of the cheapest outfits that I've got. It's about 430 pounds for the lot. So 150 pounds for the boots, 130 for these, 150 for the jacket. Really good value in the set. DMD. 75 helmets with the DMD visor. That's a specific DMD visor for the helmets. Had a few questions from people about the number plate because in Britain we have these big plastic number plates that are about that size. And what a lot of people do is replace them with much smaller aluminium plates. So this plate is seven times five size. I think seven inches times five inches. Bought it off eBay, 12 pounds, aluminium, and it's, while it's not technically the legal size, you'll, in reality, never get in any trouble for having it on. I've been, when I stopped by police speeding, they had no issue with the plate at all. So, it's a really nice way to tidy up the back of your bike, and while it may not technically be legal, you're not gonna have any problems in reality with it. Okay, let's go home and warm up. I cannot believe I'm saying that in August. <laughs> Back home, warming up. And Monica likes those boots, those former Crystal Lady boots, so much that I'm gonna have a look and see if I can find them because unfortunately at Crazy Horse, they didn't have her size. So I've been going online to have a look and see if I can find them. For one, they're not easy to come by. And secondly, most of them are on Italian and German sites. And the problem is now that we in the UK have left the EU, We've got tariffs that are being slapped onto everything that we buy from EU countries. So for example, if we buy a pair of motorcycle boots like those off this, I think this is a German site, for 130 euros, it's usually about 30% of import duties and fees and things like that that are being slapped on. So if it's 130 euros, in reality, it's probably going to be about 40 euros in fees. And that makes a difference. That's where, you know, us leaving the EU is a little bit more painful if you're buying stuff like this that's a bit harder to come by in the UK. So there's only one site that I found these on in the UK, and that is Sports Bike Shop, £140, which is 20 more than Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse actually is pretty good value. So I'll see if they'll do a price match with that. And that is, in fact, just to show you, that's... The boots, probably the coolest ladies biking boots that we've seen. So I'll see if I can get those now. They've got a button for seen it cheaper. You just click it, do the price match link and hopefully they'll price match that for us. I have to make sure if I buy it, ideally it's from a UK supplier because if I'm buying some biking gear, for example, or any gear at all from an EU country, before the transition period a few months ago, you could just freely trade with the EU. So for example, I could buy 500 pounds worth of stuff from Germany and I don't pay a penny. It's just like buying something anywhere in the UK, it's seamless. But now I've bought a couple of things from mainland, well mainland, from the EU, and it's pretty much always 
30% in duties and taxes I have to pay. So if it's, if it's something for 500 pounds, I'm often paying 160, 170 pounds in import duties. Absolutely gigantic. And you don't really realize it exists because in theory, I think it's a free trade deal, but the reality is for everyday people, free trade deal doesn't, doesn't seem to really exist because we're paying so many import fees and duties and things like that. So I'll see if I can find it from a UK supplier at a decent price. But if we can, this will be a great pair of boots for Monica. Next video, I'll be doing a Q&A style video, which will be the first one I've tried on YouTube. So if you have any questions about the bikes I've tested or on a more personal level or questions in general, write the question in the comments below. I'll save those, act upon them, and answer those questions in the next YouTube video. And that's it. Thank you so much for coming on with us today. If you're in, well, the Suffolk, the east of England, I really recommend Crazy Horse because unfortunately the coffee shop wasn't open when we were there, but it's got a really nice coffee shop upstairs. And I do know that they do bike meets there in the evenings. I think there's one actually coming up in four days time on Thursday evening. Don't know if we'll be able to go because we may have double booked, but they've got bike meets. So have a look out for those because there's some really good stuff going on. But thanks so much for coming along with us. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.